up YouTube this is box away make sure you subscribe to the channel and man I mean fights like this make they, they make me proud to be a boxer fan okay these are the fights that I want to talk about you know where I want to pull up this camera and do videos on fights like these okay when I don't do videos it's because they're announcing fights like Canelo against Liam Smith. I don't want to do videos like that because Canelo is the superstar on boxing today. And he's fighting guys like Liam Smith. He's jumping on opportunities to get easy belts. I don't want to do videos on that stuff. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't want to talk about that stuff. I don't. You know, some of you guys hit me up and be like, uh, what's your thoughts on this? You know my thoughts on this. You just want to see me or hear me rant, you know. But, man, that was a good fight. It was a great fight. I mean, I can definitely say it was my favorite fight of the year. You know, it was a fight that I really wanted to see, though. Uh, I also like Wilder and Spilka. Okay, I, I definitely like that fight. Uh, that was definitely one of my favorite fights this year. Uh, I enjoyed Vargas against Salido, too. That was a very good fight as well. But uh, I'm going to go with this being the fight of the year so far. You know, we still have a whole nother half a year. But it was a great fight. And th the thing is, you know, I, I see a lot of people that they, that believe Porter won the fight. But in the very same sentence, they say, but it was fight of the year. You know, uh, I think the judges got it right. Uh, I thought Thurman won the fight, 115 and 113. Okay, before they even announced the scorecard, I had Thurman uh, 115 and 113. Okay. Uh, the fight went exactly the way I thought it was gonna go. Um, I broke all of this down, and, you know, and I see people arguing. There's nothing wrong with arguing, but being disrespectful and everything. Yeah, you don't have to say, "Well, you don't know shit about boxing." If you think Thurman won that fight, you know, people don't have to take it that far, you know, because I gave you the blueprint before this fight. I said, "Listen, if you like Sean Porter's work rate, you're gonna pick him to win the fight." You know, the judge is going to either you as a fan or the judge is going to pick Sean Porter. If you like Thurman's clean punching, you know, and the possibility of him hurting Sean Porter at some point, then you're going to pick Thurman. You know, it's whatever way you, it's whatever you like. It's all objective, you know, and I went with Thurman. That's why I picked Thurman to win this fight. I said, Thurman, I'm going to take Thurman's clean punching. And I think Thurman's going to win a decision, you know. I mean, possibly by knockout because he has a power. But you could say the same thing with Sean Porter with the body punches, all right. Um, I don't think people need to take it. And, and you know what? For the fight, for the fight, the, the stage to be set like the way it was, they promoted this fight hard. It was on CBS. I don't know what the numbers are, the views are. I don't know what none of that is right now. But... I, I'm predicting for the views to be higher than any other PBC fight, you know, the, the, the amount of money they put into this fight was big. And I'm actually glad that they rescheduled it because, you know, it was a big fight here in New York. They filled out the, the Barclays Center, you know, I didn't end up going, but, you know, I, I know a couple of people that went and they said it was packed in there, you know. And I'm glad it was. I'm glad they had a, you know, a, a, a good show out. I'm glad that, you know, it seemed like everybody on my Twitter was tuned in it, into it. And even the people that don't even follow boxing like that was watching the fight. So I'm very happy that being that the stage was set and all eyes were on these two young guys that they delivered. So I'm very happy about that. You know, it could have been a fight where it was a snooze fest and... You know, nothing really happened. You know, I'm, I'm glad it wasn't like an early knockout. I'm glad that both fighters did well. Okay. And it was an action packed fight without it being a, it wasn't a straight up brawl, but it was a good boxing match. Um, they did play chess, but it was an action fight. And I'm very happy that the fight ended that way. I think Sean Porter even taking this loss, uh, I think he's become even more of a star. Because of this fight, because of his performance, you heard the crowd, they booed. And I personally think, regardless of the outcome, I think if it was a draw, they would have booed. They would have booed. If it, if it, uh, Sean Porter got the fight, 
they were that booed, you know, because there's plenty of people that think Thurman won, you know, uh, the fight is that close, you know, and people could say whatever they want, they could say Porter won, Thurman won, it should have been a draw, they should have been, but if you're saying that it was fight of the year, that goes to show that it's fight of the year because it was competitive, it was close, it was close going into the fight, everybody said it was a 50-50 fight, and this is why, now, as far as the actual fight, I think it was going back and forth the whole fight, okay? You give one round to Thurman, you give two to Sean, you give two to Thurman, you give one to Sean. There was rounds where Thurman won the first half or he was winning the first minute. Sean came back, won the last two minutes. There were rounds where Sean was winning rounds and then Thurman landed some really good shots to turn the fight around. I mean, listen, it was a back and forth fight throughout the whole fight, okay? Um... What I think was the key point of this fight, Sean Porter's jab oh, it was very effective. I think that was the most effective outside of him getting Thurman against the ropes and working the body. Outside of that, and the uppercuts, outside of that, I thought Sean Porter's jab was very effective. Okay, the power punching weren't wasn't that effective. I thought the jab was very effective. Okay, I thought he was landing consistently with the jab, okay? Um, it was very quick, you know, and I wasn't really impressed with Thurman's jab. I think Thurman was trying to set traps the majority of the time, and it worked, okay? Um, but he was loading up on a lot of shots, and it worked for him. But, um, you know, I was very impressed with uh, even Sean Porter's defense. It seemed like it improved. He was uh, changing levels a lot and bending at the waist and making Thurman miss, okay, when Thurman was swinging for air, all right? I was very impressed with Sean Porter with that. But the thing is, with Sean Porter, we knew coming to this fight that he's never been a big, uh, very clean puncher, okay? He's never really been much of a counter puncher. Um, he's always been very physical. You know, everybody says he wrestles. He plays like a football player. And that's what we got. We got the same Sean Porter that we've always got. Nothing changed. And if you liked it, you thought it was effective, you thought it would have, it should have won him the fight, then I have no problem with that. But that is the reason why Sean Porter lost this fight. Just like the reason why he lost the uh, Kell Brook fight. Because that fight was close too. Uh, it's because Kell Brook was landing the cleaner shots. All right? Um... Keith Thurman, uh, his counter punching, his clean punching, okay, his accuracy, his jab wasn't really there, all right, but his clean punching won him the fight, you know, him using his legs, his lateral movement, uh, I think Thurman putting himself on the ropes, we saw the Gerard, the Gerard uh, Hurd fight before that, right, it's this, Hurd does a lot of things well like Floyd Mayweather. He has a great Philly shell defense. He can he 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 has the skills to put himself on the ropes or back himself on into the corner and counter you. Okay? He has those skills. He could roll punch as well. Thurman doesn't really do that well, okay? When Thurman puts himself into the ropes, he's throwing nothing but looping shots while he's his back is against the ropes. And it's already bad because Porter is so close that you can't get any shots off. You're hitting nothing but Porter's sides, you know, and you can't, you you really have no leverage on none of your shots. You know, Porter is better at fighting that way. Porter's on the inside. He's throwing uppercuts. He's going to the body. Keith is not really effective when his back against the ropes. He doesn't know how to create any space. He doesn't know how to, you know, push off with his elbow. The little things that Hurd was doing against, you know, Molina yesterday or against when he fought Frank Alaza that time when he stopped Frank Alaza. Okay. By the way, that Molina stoppage was terrible. I don't know why they didn't let Molina finish off the fight. Um, but anyway, Keith Thurman doesn't do that that well. And that's why he looked really bad when he was against the ropes. Every time he was on a lo on the ropes, he was losing. Every single time he was on the ropes, he was losing. Okay? So um when the fight was innocent in the ring, and then there was space in between these two, Thurman was clearly winning the fight, in my opinion. Okay, he was landing the clean shots, the more effective punching. All right, Sean Porter was good with his jab, 
but his jab was mainly used to get in. He shoot it two, three times, and then you know get himself in there for he could smother his own punches, smother Keith Thurman's punches, you know, throw that rabbit punches, tie up and all that. Same stuff we always see with Sean Porter. All right, so I think that is what won the judges over for Keith Thurman. All right, what made this fight so good? Unlike the Kell Brook fight, Keith Thurman doesn't tie up much. Okay, when Keith Thurman is backed into a corner, he fights his way out. He doesn't care. He doesn't care if it's intelligent to do it. He doesn't care. When he was on the ropes, he's fighting his way, even if it looks bad. All right, even if it doesn't look skillful, he fought his way out. He fought with Sean Porter. He, I said all of this in my prediction videos. He has to do this, you know. Um, you know, me personally, I think he, you know, he did tie up at points. He did tie up in this in this fight. He did tie up at points. He wasn't completely reckless, but when Keith Thurman is getting backed up, he's going straight back, and this has always been a problem. With him. He goes straight back. And he's still loading up shots while he's going backwards, you know. Doesn't have much leverage, you know. He can't sit down on the punches like he would normally want to. But that's the way, that's why it made it a great fight. Because they were going to war the whole time, you know. They were going to war the whole time. It made it a great fight. It was an excellent fight. Um, it, was a, it, it, it was a classic. It was a classic. Straight up, you know. There are other fights that I've seen that were fighting the year that I didn't enjoy as much as this one, okay? But maybe it was the hype, maybe it was the crowd. The crowd seemed to be really into it, you know. Uh, everybody was just really into the fight, okay? Uh, now, moving forward. Uh, like I said earlier in this video, I got, I'm glad that these guys performed when the stage was set. Uh, Sean Porter has two losses on his record. Honestly, what I feel is that he lost to two guys that could outbox him and had the durability and the strength to survive against him. Okay? Uh, fighters like Paulie Malinaji, fighters like Adrian Broner. I mean, even though Adrian Broner survived and Adrian Broner got knocked out in the end, Adrian Broner was too careful. All right, his volume was too low. He didn't want to trade with Sean. He didn't want to do that. All right, Thurman didn't care, and Brooke was strong enough to tie up, and this was what made that fight not a classic because it was so much tying up, so much wrestling, just like the Alexander fight with Porter or any other fight with Porter. Um, Sean Porter and his two losses. Sean Porter has probably the most unmeaningful losses in boxing right now. I mean, he lost twice in recent years now. It's been two years now since he lost. And his losses don't really mean much, you know, because they were debatable fights against high-level competition. And I still think he's a lot of people that Porter can beat. And welterweight, I still think it's very. You can make the argument that Porter is still a, a top five welterweight. You can make that argument easily. He's a he's he could still be a top five welterweight. You know whether you like his style or not, it is effective against most fighters. Okay, um, I don't think he his stock went up, and so did Thurman's. Uh, what happens from here? I you know I really don't know. Um, I want to I want to know what Danny Garcia is gonna do. Is Danny Garcia gonna fight Adrian Brona? Uh, if the Kell Brook, you know, I don't know if the Kell Brook fight with uh, Jesse Vargas is official. I don't know. You know, I know that there was some issues. I still heard. Uh, I saw on Twitter the other day that they were still trying to work out the fight where Kell Brook wanted too much money or something like that. So I don't know what happens with that fight. Uh, but there's still a lot of options out there. You got. Sammy Vasquez coming up. He's coming up. He's fighting Louis Colasso soon. Uh, you got, uh, you know, you got Errol Spence out there. You know, and I think Sean Porter would be a tough fight for Errol Spence. I think he's a, a tough fight for anyone. You know, 
Um, if, if anybody wants to fight Errol Spence, it'll, it's the best time to, is to do it now before the kid gets better. You know? Um, you know, like I said, I don't know what Danny Garcia is going to do. But what I will say is that I like the fact that Errol is throwing a lot of PBC's names out there. So everything must be really good between him and Al Heyman. And it's very possible possible now that we might get some fights between the Heyman fighters and the top rank fighters. Which is a great start. I mean, Golden Boy is beef. That's still going to be out there. But Golden Boy don't have the roster like top rank does. I, I very well rather, you know, Bob Aram and, and Al Heyman get good on good terms. Because in the welterweight division, those are what the fights we need to see. You know, I want to see Bradley against Thurman. You know, I want to see Pacquiao against Adrian Broner. You know, that's rumored. Or Danny Garcia against Pacquiao or whoever. As far as Floyd Mayweather, I would like Floyd to stay retired. But if he were to come back and fight Keith Thurman, I still think Floyd would beat Thurman. There's nothing. I, this was a great fight and everything. But there's no part of me that think Thurman could be Floyd Mayweather. It's no part of me. I think Thurman would get outboxed fairly easily, you know? I think Thurman has a puncher's chance, but who didn't have a puncher's chance against Floyd Mayweather, you know? Um, if the fight were to happen, yeah, it'd be great. I would pay for it, you know, I'll make sure I'm off, I'll throw a party, or, you know, whatever. But I don't think Thurman could beat him, all right? Kell Brook. Kell Brook would be really hard for Thurman to win against him because Thurman likes to throw, throw a lot of looping shots. Like I said, he doesn't have the jab. His jab, he's, he's skilled, but he doesn't make he doesn't have a jab like Kell Brook. And the thing with Kell Brook is they're both clean punchers, but Kell Brook, like, I would take Kell Brook's throwing straight shots straight down the middle than curve it over Thurman's looping shots. You know, um, Kell Brook has power too. You know, Kell Brook is a bigger fighter. Um, I think he's a, a better technician than Keith Thurman. And I just think Kell Brook's and his, his, his straight shots are, are better than Thurman's looping shots, in my opinion, power shots. Um, so I think that would be a tough fight for Thurman. And most likely Thurman would have to go out there to fight him. Um, in the UK, all right. Not saying that Kell Brook can't win without the judges, but if the if the judges are going to be in anybody's favor, they're going to be in Kell Brook's favor, right? So that would be a tough fight for Thurman. Floyd would be a tough fight for Thurman. Fights that I think Thurman would win against Broner. I think he can edge Danny Garcia out, but Danny Garcia, you can never sleep on him because. He's always, he seems like he's always the underdog. Not lately, but in a lot of fights, he's been the underdog, okay? Um, uh, I would love to see even a rematch. You know what? The thing about the rematch, I would love to see a rematch between these two. All right, Thurman and, and, and Porter. The thing is, if Thurman doesn't leave himself on the ropes as much as he did, I don't think the fight would be as competitive. You know, if Thurman is like, you know what, I'm going to fight a more strategic fight because people think this guy beat me the first time. And if he does like how Floyd did with Maidana in a rematch, it's not going to be the fight that the first one was. That's the only that's the only complaint I might have about the rematch. If it were to happen, that's the way I would think it would go. Um, Porter, I think he would just see the thing with Porter. And I'm going to finish up because I, I, I don't have too much time I can spend on here. The thing with Porter is when Porter is having trouble, his main adjustment is to just do more work, be more aggressive, come harder, come stronger. You know, he doesn't make any technical adjustments in the ring. You know, he doesn't really do that. What you see is what you pretty much get with Sean Porter. I think Sean Porter should stick with his dad, but I think he needs to bring somebody else in the camp to work on certain things. Stick to his fighting style, but, you know, someone that's going to make him a little bit more, 
I don't know, someone that's gonna bring a little bit more of the boxing fundamentals in his game. There's a bug flying around. Some somebody that's gonna just add more to his arsenal. Uh, Shaw Porter, okay. Just bring somebody else in camp with him. Because he's going to continue having this problem when he fights really skilled fighters. That's what my my opinion on him. Thurman, uh, great post-fight interview by the end. The, the, the post-fight press conference was great. Uh, really great. Uh, I like to hear Thurman's breakdown of the fight. It was really good. Thurman, I mean, listen... He fights Errol Spence. Errol Spence is definitely going to go to his body. He's going to be more effective to his body than Sean Porter was. Uh, he just can't stay on the ropes. Okay. And I think being that he doesn't back down from anyone. Being that that uh, he likes to go to war. That could be his downfall with certain fighters. Okay. Um. Uh, You know, I think, uh, like I was just saying, if he were to fight Porter, I think he would make some adjustments where he's going to do a little bit more boxing like he did in the Bun fight. Um, it's not, it's going to make, it's going to take away from the action of the first fight, but it would definitely give him an easier decision if they were to fight in a rematch. That's just my opinion, all right? If you think Porter won the first fight, obviously you disagree with me. But, um... Anyway, I love the fight. I'm going to end it with this. I love the fight. Uh, you know, the stock rise for both of these fighters. And I I, I said I gave you an in-depth video, a breakdown last week. If you haven't watched it, you can still watch it. I gave you an in-depth breakdown of the fight and what these two fighters mean to me. And I think the stage was set for them. And I think they performed against the world for the world to see them fight. They did what they had to do. It's time to take advantage of it, okay? Uh, Thurman, you know, Porter coming off of a loss. You know, he can get right back in there real quick. Like I said, it wasn't a bad loss. Thurman, on the other hand, he needs a fight with Danny Garcia. Hopefully, Floyd Mayweather comes back and fight him, you know? I mean, I think he would lose that fight, but whatever. You never know. Maybe he could fight Tim Bradley. You know, get that name. Get Danny Garcia. Get Pacquiao. Maybe he could get a fight with one of these guys. And if he gets a bigger name than even Sean Porter, this will catapult him into pound for pound. You know, I I, I still don't can't say that Thurman is in the pound for pound, but it's you can if he is, if you think he is there, you would put him at like number 10, you know. But if he gets a name like a win over a big name. That would definitely catapult him up there, okay? Eventually going to 154. I know he talked about beating Demetrius Andre or fighting Demetrius Andre because, you know, Andre beat him in the amateurs. Thurman can't beat Andre. <laughs> you, you might want to wait a few years before that fight happened because uh, Thurman's not beating Demetrius Andre. He's not beating Andre. It's not too many fighters. I think Thurman could beat up there at 154. I think Laura would beat uh, Thurman. I think Andre would beat Thurman. Uh, you know, I'd even think I would even pick J-Rock to beat Thurman Alright But anyway, alright That's my video I hope I speak spoke, spoken on everything uh, Let me know what you guys think Make sure you guys subscribe And I'll see you guys on the next one Peace